Chris Duffin here. I'm sitting down with uh, Jay Nera, who just uh, competed yesterday at Boss of Bosses 2. Uh, for those that don't know, Jay is uh, from Dynamo Barbo in Canada. I'm not going to hold him being a Canadian against him, at least for today. So, um, But uh, I've got much respect for, for, for uh, Jay. If you haven't checked out any of his videos, um, he's, uh, he's another uh, thinker's man lifter, I guess would be a, the way to put it. Uh, great on coaching and cueing the movement. And, you know, that's, that's just really key for me. And uh, actually, I just got done talking about this on a live stream. Um, it's, there's so many people that, you know, they focus on all the, the mobility or all these other things and don't realize that the issues they're having and all the work they're having to do with it correctly is because they're moving wrong in the first, in the first place. And if you correct that movement, you don't get those negative outputs. So, um, so I'm sitting here with Jay. We're actually just chatting about uh, squat technique. So... Um, Jay had some observations on uh, uh, some coaching points that I've given on uh, squat technique, and we were thinking we were kind of on differing points. And uh, yeah, yeah, like when you when we look at it, we both say things a little bit differently, but they end up reaching the same goal. And I think one of the things is, like you say, like a little bit of a, a tuck kind of like uh, you're not trying to get your pelvis out here like a stripper, you know, chest up, ass back. You're kind of trying to get that neutral spine. So you cue like getting the butt under you a little bit, right? Uh, yeah, and I think, well, most of my cues are usually on that, that, that T-spine, and I think at times when I presented it, because I'm trying to overemphasize it, I'm actually standing, and as I'm doing it, I think I am tilting the pelvis just because I'm overemphasizing this piece that I'm trying to, to focus on so much, yeah. and then people are possibly picking all, up on what I'm doing here, but a lot of, like, what I'm trying to do is get, you know, by drawing this rib cage down, we're creating this cylinder here, and we're creating all this pressure and then driving it out to create that, that intra-abdominal pressurization. But what I want is that, that pelvis aligned from here to that, to that shoulder. It's stacked. It's this stacked cylinder yeah. that just sits there, and it can't move any direction. It's like a, a telephone pole. You know, it can go this way, this way, but it doesn't do this. Yeah, and that's It's exactly, just going to snap. And that's exactly how I teach it. I used to call it like setting your body in stone or one-piece lifting. And then I got into Brian Carroll and read a bit of uh, Stuart McGill and he talked about the lifter's wedge. And it's actually the exact same concept. Yes. It's yes. pretty much the exact same concept. Yeah. We're trying to get all this so that is unbreakable. Yes. Right? And, and, and we it, want all of the force going into the hips. You know, I always think of like a bent toothpick. Like you have a toothpick and if it stays straight and you squeeze it, it goes through, breaks through the thumbs. It's powerful. But the second you get a little bend in it, you get that power leak, boom, it's going to break. It, it's huge. Right. People ask me all the time, how do you squat so much? I'm like, it's because I'm not doing what you're doing or what other people, you know, you see them doing. You watch that squat and that everything is stacked right here and you get this, you, know, you transfer all that power from those hips right into that shoulder. And there's a lot of things that you've got to do. A lot of natural athletes do it automatically and don't even know what they're doing. But I find that even with those people, like the conscious practice of it actually still improves it yet. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I noticed, uh, I noticed exaggerating, blowing that air down there. I actually really liked your cue of filling up the vase from the bottom up. I really like that cue. I've been using that. And I was using that on my deadlift and I've been exaggerating it. It feels like I'm going to pass out because I hold my breath for so long. I'm really making sure. And the bar just pops. Absolutely. And I've, I've been powerlifting for five, six years. But now I exaggerate it and I still get that extra 20, 30 pounds safer. You know exactly. what I mean? It just feels better. I love that. I, it, and and I, I tell my lifters a lot of times, I'm like, you, you know once you've got it all down and you know when it's time to deadlift, the bar comes off the floor. It's yeah. like, oh, I better finish it. Because there's that much pressure and there's no energy release. Yeah. As soon as you've got that leak, then you want to go and just grab and yank it up because it's you don't have that power yeah. just locked in. Yeah, one thing I noticed that changed a lot is I started deadlifting with more quads and trying to apply, or the, apply that lifter's wedge. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of similar to how you deadlift, except I'm conventional. So I started bringing my hips lower and using more quads off the ground, kind of like uh, Eric Lillybridge. Mm -hmm. And I'll do a couple pumps and like, same thing, three, four plates. I do a pump and it just pops off the ground. And I'm like, oh, well that was good. Let's go from there. So sometimes I'll actually pop it, the bar's floating, and then I just stand up. Yeah. And that's when you know everything is perfect. Exactly. And I really like that feeling. Yeah, I got, unbreakable. Thing. I'm sure you coach people sumo as well as I coach people conventional all the time. I know how to pull conventional. Um, a lot of people don't realize that online because they see what I, I yes. do. But 
it's all the exact. You're doing exactly the same things. The, the sequence may be a little bit different when you're approaching, but in the end, we're, it's all the exact same stuff. And that lifter's wedge, I've, I've got a video on my private series that I've walked through. How do you wedge on all the lifts? Which is, it. I mean, it's, it's, it's not about lifting the weight like the bench press. It's not about pressing the weight up. It's actually wedging yourself under, wedge yourself under it. Yeah. And same thing with that deadlift. If you try to deadlift and wedge your hips under the bar, not actually the bars down here, but they're connected to the shoulder. You try to wedge those hips in to finish the lift instead of lifting the bar. That world of difference. Makes a yeah. huge difference. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think people take into account what they're thinking here, how much it affects, like what you're visualizing happening can affect the lift to such a great degree. It's unreal. Yeah. Some people just go up to the bar and they don't think about it, or they have too many cues. Too many. Yeah. That's over cueing is such a. I, I, I try to limit myself to, to when I any of my coaching series. There's five. I, I, I try to break it down. Sometimes it takes me. They seem really simple. It's like five cues. Five cues to squat. And like that took me two years to come up with. Yeah. Like I mean, <laughs> to make it that simple because there is a whole lot more. But it's like, how do I get these three things accomplished with this one cue? Yeah. And how do you get there? And uh, sometimes what order do you say them? Because if you say them all at once, they're thinking about too many things. Yeah. You know, the thing I hate the most is when people say like so many cues that can be packaged into one thing yes. you know so if you you can really get across you know the lifter's wedge or the cylinder to someone if you can really drill that into their brain then when you say get tight in the upper body or cylinder block up yes. one piece whatever the cue is then when you say it it's like boom i said one thing and they just did five exactly you know and that's why I, I, yeah you try to break it down to those little pieces because i'll have those couple cues but there may be like 45 minutes of coaching of what that one cue means for lift before we actually release them to say, here's here's what this means. Yeah. Yeah. I love, uh, you, you did a uh, conventional deadlift video, and uh, you know, you're, um, I don't remember exactly what you said, but you were talking about how to engage those those laps on the deadlift and doing that right now. I think that was one of your last cues where they like, break off. The yeah, one of the things I like to say is like break the bar. Yep. Right, so I like the wedge, so you're tall, then you're making your arms long, which gets your lats. So you just push your arms to the ground, obviously you feel your lats. But then when you grab the bar, you try and break it, like you're trying to bend it. Mm -hmm. Like Bo Jackson, breaking a baseball bat. Yep. Right, so you kind of wedge like that, and then everything feels locked up from that point. But uh, that's 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 a whole other thing, because sometimes when you're deadlifting, you want to let your shoulders go a little but bit. You still, yeah, and so, I, how I, 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 I use that, because I use that same cue, and actually your your video helped me like re-engage that myself, because uh, it's a little hard to think about that breaking it when you're in the sumo. And uh, so I hadn't been consciously approaching that, and I noticed how much better my second and third reps were, and I said down the floor, I'm like, oh, that's because I've got those lats engaged by the time I've gone back down. And that first one, it's like, boom, same thing, you can't think about bending it around you because you're... You're in the middle now, you're just like, but it's still the same thing. But we don't want to retract the shoulder blades. You actually just want to tighten them rigid. All we're looking for with the lats is not actually to move them, so it's like to create rigidity between here and here. Yeah. So many people don't realize that how much um, they're like, well, lats aren't you know, a prime mover, but they're incredibly important for all of our lips because they create this, that, 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 that cylinder is part of yeah, those lats are part of it. That's how we get this connected in here. It's weird. It's weird. Everyone thinks of them as just a pull-up muscle, but they are they, they are truly when you're a power lifter, a stabilization muscle. Actually, that's absolutely. It's one of the things people need to kind of come across. Sometimes I have uh, like the, some of the lighter lifters. They grab and I can't demonstrate, but they grab the bar in real tight. And I no no move out a little bit. And they're like no no it feels loose. I'm like well, that's the moving out isn't going to fix the issue. Now do a pull up. Nothing's going to move, but you know, yeah. engage against it. And, oh, you're tight and solid again, yeah. and in here they can't, they can't they're engage, close, they can't, yeah. they're too close, they're real tight up here, and it feels great, but watch the people that lift that way, and you'll always see them when they get to failure, like this, Yeah. because this isn't like, this is all tight, but it's not hooked in here, and so just, I kind of so just like right. tell them to reach your hands up, you know, pull your head tall, and just squeeze, that's where you're at, that's your world, exactly, so, we do the same thing, so you do it on the deadlift, you do it on the bench, you do it on the, so I bend on the squat, here's the deadlift, 
bench, same thing. We do the same thing. I see that oftentimes too on the bench that people will think about bending the bar, but they'll they'll be doing this because they're they're thinking about the bar and it's actually rotation in the shoulder. <laughs> well, I don't mind a little bit of rotation, a but little you, bit. But you'll see some people that'll do this. Yeah, and uh, elbows completely not aligned with the wrist. I yeah. don't know how they do that. But uh, I also really like that you just mentioned the, 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 yeah, the puppet on a string. Puppet on a string. Yeah. So I don't think I have any videos on it, but anybody that comes to work with me, it'll be oftentimes it may be any variety of things. We might be working a get up, we might be working the bench press, we might be working deadlift, we could be working all these things and if they're ever in this position I always folks tall with the head, push the top of that spine away from you. You feel those shoulders drop away. You know? Yeah, and another thing that helped with that too is uh, keep complimenting each other's videos but you said on the breathing the collarbone stare at the collarbone yeah so I noticed that so when people are standing tall and then they go they do this right so you say no don't let that collarbone or the shoulders move when you breathe then that really helps with this because yeah. that was one thing I noticed a lot of guys I'd see some lifters and they get excited and they breathe in and then they go down the squat like, what the sorry what are you doing yeah. you know what I mean the people who are on my channel are okay with a little swearing on occasionally all right, pop, ball, shit, pop. Now we got to edit that out. No. Uh, uh, try this one. Um, this doesn't work with everyone. Kind of takes a little bit of a cue, but you just mentioned that suck in. Um, imagine that there's some balloons right here, right here. Where they just kind of you can rub it a little bit, maybe create a little bit of a burn. But take that and then take those balloons right there, all the way up there, and inflate them. And you feel it kind of come into that belly a little bit, and then now take a breath. Now yeah. take a breath, suck in through the end of your nose, and see it. You see that just came in right up here. Yeah, yep. Yeah. It's kind of an interesting thing. I learned that from uh, Dr. Craig Levinson. Um, Sweet. But uh, it's really interesting. It's uh, uh, that's how breathe right strips work. It's how they. <laughs> Yeah, it's, just, it's actually just. I'm thinking up here, but the breathing happens down here. Yeah. It kept me from doing that. Yeah. That's actually weird. It's in it. So, yeah, when I'm doing my breathing assessments, that's what there's a whole lot of different ways. If somebody's got, we do this, we do, I do a bunch of different pieces. We do alligator breathing, we do alligator weight. Um, we do this until we play with, like, what's the best one for for that particular person for, for, for getting that correction. You go, okay, that's the one that you're going to work. That's an easy so, idea. I like so, that. Yeah. You know, you've got to have a whole lot of bags, you know, tools in that bag of tricks to pull from, to pull off those magic tricks. Oh, no, you just use one tool for everyone. <laughs> everyone. Yeah. everyone has to pause squat right now because someone did it on Instagram. <laughs> everyone needs to take a sledgehammer to a tire because someone did it on Instagram. Oh, my God. Don't, don't even go there. It, there's been a few things that came up recently with, um, like, lifters doing, like, on the floor, like, seated good mornings yeah, all the way to the floor, that. and then, like, another person was doing... Uh, Stiff-legged deadlifts with blocks with their waist going all the way between their legs. And do you realize those people have different anatomical structures than most of us? Well, like the one I saw was like a young girl who was probably 112 pounds. Yeah. She's like tapping the, the weights on the floor doing these good mornings. Yeah. And there's a bunch of people going, "Oh, I need to try that. I need to do that. I need to work till I get I can get there." I'm like, that's not meant for everyone. <laughs> It doesn't necessarily mean that she's doing it. Well, it's good for Donnie you to be Thompson able to do that. could probably do that. Probably. But <laughs> so mobile out there. Uh, well, uh, any last words before we uh, wrap this up? I uh, can't think of any. If you're in Ottawa, check out Dynamo Barball. Absolutely. So it's great to know. Um, you know, that's a key thing to understand is wherever you're at, you need to locate the professionals, the people that can help you get better, be better. You need to, as a lifter, you need to know the coaches, the clubs, and also the practitioners. If you run into issues, do your homework. Know who you can go to, because there's so many people that are out there that are like, oh, well, don't lift, don't do this. Don't. And, and you've got to do your homework and know the right people. Because in every profession, there's good and there's bad, and then there's exceptional. And you want to find exceptional. I think I could have saved like three years time if I could go back in time and talk to myself. Oh God. Well, that's why I do what I do now. Yeah. You know, it's because I'm trying to help. Like, I, I, I've hurt myself and I've done things and I'm so far down the path. I'm like, but that's why I've spent the time the last, you know, 10 years researching and figuring this stuff out. Yeah. Uh, and then sharing it. Because I don't I, think young kids get it. I don't <laughs> yeah, think I have some do. young lifters. It's like, you don't get it. You're like me when I was 20. It's like, you're making all the mistakes I made 
shut up, stop being an idiot, you know. <laughs> or something. No, I want to lift heavy. Yeah. Like, or, or, or the person that goes, I can't believe that took me a whole year to get this figured out. That's so frustrating. I'm like, that took me 15 years. I just helped you get there in a year. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's nothing. <laughs> Freaking millennials. Millennials. <laughs> They're worse than Canadians. Oh, sorry. <laughs> what if you're a Canadian millennial? Oh, oh, oh well, it's, it's, it's over. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, good talking with you. Good nice talking to you, Chris. That was a good discussion. If you'd like to support the production of further content and maximize your athletic performance, check out kabukistrength.net. Our goal is to provide you with the tools and the methods to maximize your performance. There's constantly adding new products to our site, so please check it out. All that's left is for you to bring the attitude.